always hear about how Marines are tough and the first to fight. It made me wonder, do I have what it takes to be a Marine? I knew I always wanted to be a Marine, but I didn't know if I could live up to the legacy of all those who came before me. We go out through the nation, we find those young men and women that want the challenge of being Marines, we recruit them, and we make them Marines. Being called the United States of Once a Marine, something better. Marine Group Gold Not Ranker is Grand Manager Gold Ranker Forever. Being called the United States of Marine, always Marine. Being called the United States of Marine, always Marine. Being called the United States of Marine, always Marine. Being called the United States of Marine, always Marine. Being called a United States Marine is something earned, not given. What made me want to be a Marine was wanting to be able to lead others, but also fight for my country, whether that be actually going into combat or just serving in a way that could help others. We make Marines, we build teams, we fight and win. These recruits are entrusted to my care. I will train them to the best of my ability. I will develop them into smartly disciplined, physically fit, basically trained Marines, thoroughly indoctrinated in love of corps and country. I will demand of them and demonstrate by my own example the highest standards of personal conduct, morality, and professional skill. I, do something swear that I'll support and defend. From the oldest post of our Corps here in Washington, D.C., and on the eve of our 240th birthday, the Sergeant Major and I want to wish Marines around the world a happy birthday. But more importantly, we hope each of you will have a chance to reflect on our history, remember those who have sacrificed, and reaffirm your commitment to the strengthening of our Corps. This year also marks 100 years of making Marines at Recruit Depot Paris Island. Our Corps has seen many changes in the previous 100 years and throughout our history. But one thing that hadn't changed is each Marine's commitment to contributing to our great legacy. Each year during our birthday celebration, we listen to the words of our 13th Commandant, General John A. Lejeune. In his message, he says, our legacy is the eternal spirit which has animated our Corps from generation to generation. Marines, I want to reinforce this point. You are the embodiment of that legacy. It's the very foundation of who we are and what we will continue to be. When we look back at the history of our Corps, we see countless examples of Marines contributing to our past. From our first amphibious raid in New Providence in the Bahamas back in 1776 to the historic Battle of Iwo Jima in 1945. This year marks the 70th anniversary of the Battle of Iwo Jima, hallowed ground for all Marines. It was there following 36 days of violent combat where the world saw the warrior spirit and the will to win of the United States Marine. In February 1945, as U.S. forces fought across the Pacific, their next objective was Iwo Jima. The young men that I faced on this island were just like me. Uh, they were fighting for the emperor. I was fighting to go home. I never felt anything but comfort as a rifle co commander around my troops because I knew how good they were, how brave they were. I thank the veterans who sit here among us and those who today are with us only in spirit. We tell them that we love them. We honor them for what they did. We tell them we admire their courage. We tell them we still miss them because we do. The stories of Corporal Woody Williams and Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone highlight the fighting spirit of Marines at Iwo Jima. During the day of February the 23rd, the same day the flag went up, the same day that I did the job that resulted in my receiving the Medal of Honor. Two of those Marines who were protecting me died. They gave all they had and so much more than I did. And yet I'm the guy that's wearing the medal. And I have said I am just the caretaker of it. I don't wear it for what I did. I wear it for what they did. 
five years after the end of World War II. Marines showed their indomitable fighting spirit in Korea at numerous places. None more telling than the seawall at Incheon or the unbearable winter at Chosen Reservoir. The weather was cold and got colder and colder while we were up there trying to get out of that reservoir area. It was about one or two o'clock in the morning when we started to get hit and it wasn't North Koreans that was hitting us, it was China. When the Chinese hit us, we hit back twice as hard. And that was our attitude. The Marines that were there, we didn't go there to face a peace treaty. We went in with the idea of winning the war and we continued to fight right up to the very last round. This year also marks the 50 year anniversary of the Marine Corps' first major offensive in Vietnam, Operation Starlight. And as soon as H Company landed, all you saw was explosions and pow, pow, I mean, people were shooting. Starlight uh, was the first big tough battle that these young Marines had to face. And they were going up against a veteran enemy force. If there were any doubts about whether or not this rock and roll generation of Marines from the 1960s could fight, those doubts were erased by Operation Starlight. Following Vietnam, our Corps benefited greatly from the experienced NCOs and officers who stayed in service and remained dedicated to improving the professionalism of the Marine Corps. The Marines they groomed would refocus the Corps to a more expeditionary mindset, marked by numerous engagements throughout the 80s and 90s. After the attacks on September the 11th, Marines knew that there would be more to do in support of defending our homeland. With sustained combat operations in Afghanistan and Iraq, a new generation of Marines has built upon the Corps' remarkable heritage. Marines continue to prepare for any crisis and remain ready to deploy as the nation's expeditionary force in readiness. Get on the wire! Get the ammo can! Ammo can! Go, Bo! Get out! Sergeant Major and I are reminded daily of our obligation to support and contribute to the legacy of our Corps. These recruits here at Paris Island, like those at San Diego, will soon earn their Eagle Globe and anchor. Who knows, maybe amongst them is the next Gunnery Sergeant John Bassalone or Corporal Woody Williams. Those Marines became who they are because their dedicated squad leaders and platoon sergeants trained them well. We must continue that transformation, continue the professional development of those Marines so that when the nation requires men and women of action, they will summon the courage and tap into our great legacy to accomplish the mission, no matter what the odds. When another Marine says a Semper Fi, we're saying we are faithful to each other, and to be true to each other. All Marines seem to be out of the same mold. When the time comes, they'll always be ready. They are able. I'm just so proud to, to be a Marine. When we come into the Corps, we're taught certain standards, and being faithful to those standards and to each other is pretty much what Simplify is. Who do you fight for? Who do you really fight for? I love this God, country, core. No, it's the unit, the guy. You fight for the core first. I don't care what anybody says. God may come second, country can come third, but you fight for the core. Happy birthday, Marines, wherever you are, deployed in a foreign land facing our nation's foes, at sea with our Navy shipmates underway, training with family and friends celebrating our birthday. We must remain ready for that next fight, wherever and whenever it is. And we must continue to uphold the legacy of those that have gone before. And we remain Semper Fidelis.